Maeve Wiley's simple yet iconic grunge looks have led to many people dressing up as her. But something that I've never seen anyone risk trying to make is her signature fringe jacket, which I've always wanted, yet always thought I couldn't have. Until right before the new season of Sex Education, after a long time searching for the perfect garment, when I found this red cotton jacket that I felt was just right for this project. But I still needed it to be darker, with purple, red wine, and brownish undertones. So, after removing all the buttons and wetting the whole jacket, I mixed red, blue, and brown in a hot bucket of water. I will let the jacket in there for 45 minutes, then rinse, wash, and leave to dry. For the upper part of the jacket, I used this originally beige suede jacket that I dyed the exact same way as I did with the previous one, getting it wet first to make sure that everything dyes evenly. And in Portugal, we don't have a wide range of dyes, so in order to make the grey, I had to use a less saturated quantity of black here. That's also why I had to mix three dyes to darken the red jacket, which, after moving the pleats in the back, I had to cut the upper part of, so that I could know how much fabric I would have to work with. And, uh, after procrastinating for quite some days, I started by removing the sleeves of the now grey jacket, and tracing myself to see where I would have to cut the front part of it. For the back, I cut a straight and triangular shape, then removed the lining, then for the front, a simple wavy shape, and then... Okay, no, never mind, this was just a bad transition. But then I was left with a problem. The shoulders were too narrow, and in order to broaden them, I had to attach pieces of fabric to the sides, front and back. And I was afraid that it would get too bulky in some areas, so, after sewing, I glued everything down, so that everything stays nice and flat, as you can see here when I trimmed the excesses of the fabric. Before going any further, I zigzag stitched all the raw edges of the red fabric to prevent it from fraying, and I genuinely recommend that you do this as soon as you cut it. Don't be like me. Anyways, after fighting my fears for quite some days, I won and started making the fringes. I was very scared of making the wrong size of the fringes and then not having enough fabric for everything, but they ended up being fine, with 17 centimeters long and 7 millimeters wide. Just to be safe, I cut them 1 centimeter longer. And this was very time consuming. I tried using scissors, an exacto knife, and it only worked when I bought a real fabric cutter, so I definitely recommend that. By now, I was really tired. I was... These were getting in my nerves, so I gave it a little break and went to Lisbon. So, when I came back with a clearer mind, I realized that the easiest way to sew everything together would be by gluing it down first. So, I hemmed the grey part and attached the fringes to it. And although it was going fine, I remember that I was feeling really bad these days, so I opened the Bible, praying for a message to make me feel better, and it did. Suddenly I was not so anxious, I was finally able to go back to working properly and with confidence. And by this time everything seemed okay, until I noticed that the machine was skipping some stitches. Apparently, all that I had to do was make the tension of the thread tighter, but it was enough to make me question myself if I was going to be able to sew through all of that. Luckily, I kept on being positive and managed to do everything as best as I could. And honestly, my biggest concern here was not being able to do everything as I had planned, because sometimes I'm a bit of a control freak. And by sometimes, it's quite a lot sometimes. But now we need to go back to the jacket, because I'm showing you how I made the fringes for the sleeves. And I did that by cutting a strip of fabric off the red jacket, then gluing the fringes on that strip, then gluing that strip on the sleeve, then sewing everything together to make sure that it's in place and pretty secure. I also did all of this because Maeve's jacket has a seam where the fringes are, but I cannot do that with my jacket, because if I did that, the sleeves would be too narrow, and it was sort of painful to sew this through an armhole, but with patience you can do everything, so I just did it very calmly.
I didn't say anything because I wanted you to enjoy the rain. But here I am, the next day, almost finishing this project. All that was left to do was sewing the upper part of the sleeve right on the shoulder and attaching the shoulder pads. To match the feeling of finishing something, I decided to finish the journey of letting my hair grow. I had been letting a mullet live in my soul for three years and I was, I just, I chopped it off, just like I did with these fringes here. They were a little longer than I wanted them to be. Little did I know that I had forgotten to tighten the waist of the jacket, so I made some pleats on the sides. When it came to styling, I chose some classic dark pieces, like some faded jeans, a shirt, tank tops, and even layered a mash top just for the texture. I only wore boots because I prefer them over sneakers, sometimes used a belt, and accessorized myself with two improvised necklaces. But going back to the jacket itself, I decided to keep the front straight, as opposed to Maeve's one. However, I wanted the back to be as close to the original one as possible, and I think I did a really good job. I'll be posting more of the following pictures on Instagram, so if you want to check them out, link in the description.